So let's take a look at how to plot graphs in Excel. So I've got a simple set of data here that are from an electric circuit. I've got some measurements of voltage and current and I want to plot a graph of these numbers. So what I might have been asked to do is to plot voltage versus current. Now we need to know what that means and we've got some rules here. First of all, if you're told to plot something versus something, that means plot Y versus X. So we want voltage on the Y axis and current on the X axis. Now there is another rule to do with graphing and if I'm not told to plot something versus something, then I have to decide myself. So if I have a, a set of data, I need to plot the independent variable on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and the dependent variable on the y-axis, the vertical axis. So usually, you know, you get told to plot something versus something, but when it's left up to you to decide, these are the rules you need to follow. Independent on the x, dependent on the y. Okay, so to plot this data, you need to select a square somewhere away from the numbers themselves. If you highlight the numbers and then try and insert a graph, more often than not you'll get a graph that isn't what you want. It will automatically draw the graph for you and you won't know which variable is on what axis. And that's a, that it won't turn out how you need it to, especially when you've got um, more than one set of data. So, And I'll, sh I'll show you that later on how to do um, more than one set of data in another video. So, But to start with, let's look at a simple graph and we click away from the data and we're going to do it all manually and tell it where we want all the data. So we'll select a scatter graph. This is the most common type of graph we use in science. And we'll just make it a little bit bigger there. So I've got a blank area here to make a graph and I right click on this area and I go select data and here's my window here, it's showing me I haven't got any data here at all, what I need to do is add a series of data, so I click add and now I'm going to do my first series, so the series name, let's call it, I want to plot voltage versus current, so let's call it voltage versus current and then uh, what I want on the y-axis, I come over here, y versus x, so I want voltage on the y-axis, so I click that little box next to the y-axis data and I click it again once I've highlighted that data for the y-axis so you saw I clicked this little box highlighted the data clicked it again and so now it knows what I want on the y-axis then I come here and do it for the x-axis I click here I highlight the data for the x-axis so that's current and I click it again and now I click OK because I've finish that and I'll click OK again and I'm back to my graph and I've selected the data that I want on each of the axes and I can see I have my six data points and you might be able to see that it looks like there's a nice trend on here as uh, voltage is increasing we've got current increasing we've got a trend where it's increasing up here it looks like a linear trend a straight line trend so uh, one other thing I want to do of course on this graph when I've got a scatter graph is to insert a line of best fit and so to do that you just right click on one of the points and you go down here to add trend line and there are many shapes you can use for lines of best fit and I'll do a, a one that isn't straight in a, in a later video let's just look at a straight line first uh, so linear is selected it looks fairly straight um, and, but one way you can check um, what type of or what shape the, the trend line should be is to select these two little check boxes down here we've got display equation on chart and display r squared value and so they've come up on the chart so I'll just close that now and I can move that around to wherever I want it I might just put it there for now and what that gives me is the equation of the line whatever shape the line is it'll tell me the equation there this one's a straight line so it's y equals mx plus b that's the general equation for a straight line and uh, it's also got the R squared value uh, so and what that means is the closer that number is to 1 the better the fit that line is to this data so if I get an R squared value of exactly 1 then that that uh, line of best fit is a perfect fit to that data so usually you know a good fit is I don't know somewhere around 0.9 you know, probably 0.95 to 1, something like that. So, you know, this is, and, and it looks like a good fit too. You basically, with a line of best fit, especially when you're drawing it yourself on a, on a piece of paper, on a grid paper, you 
ba you're basically making a graphical average of the points. So you want the line to go roughly halfway between um, the points, so have an equal number of points on one side of the line and the other, and it, and it, it represents a graphical average of those points, and it shows the trend in those points. So that looks pretty good to me. And um, these, the, the equation and the R squared value come in uh, handy when you have especially when you have graphs that aren't linear. If you want to try different shaped graphs, you want to try and find one that has the best R squared value closest to 1. And later on you might need to use the slope of the graph for something. Well this value here is the slope of the graph, the number before x. When you've got a straight line, uh, that number is the slope of the graph. So that's handy in some cases. So it'll work that out for you. Um, so moving on, there's a few other things we need to do with the graph. Of course some of the important features of the graph are the points and the line of best fit. We've done those. You need scales on each of the axes, um, especially when you've got more than one set of data, and I'll do that in a later video. Uh, you need some sort of a key uh, to show you what, what points represent what data. And I'm also missing a couple of things here. I need some labels and units on the uh, on the axis, so any of these sort of things like labels and units that you want to change on the graph, you come up here and it's in this little layout tab when you've got the graph selected, um, and we can play with a few things here. I can move the legend, I might just move that um, to the bottom, so legend at the left at top, all right, at bottom, I'll put it down here so that just gets it out of the road and can make the graph a little bit bigger, which is nice. Um, and before we start, another thing I like to do is put the major grid lines on uh, in the vertical direction, just so it looks like a graph's got some nice grid lines, makes it easy to read off where the points are, etc., or easier. And then I need to put some um, labels on the axis, so axis titles. So I've got the horizontal axis, that's the x-axis, is current in this case, so here I need to put in select that current and make sure you put the units in amps okay and then I need also on the vertical axis I need let's do a rotated title which means it goes vertically up the page and that is voltage and don't forget the units in volts so now we go, all we might need to do is just tidy things up a little bit I can just pop the pop that there, that's the equation for the line. I've got my points, my line, my scale, my labels, my units, my heading, all looks good. So there's a nice little graph uh, of that data and in some later videos we'll do